To our next presenter, Tim Fox, who is a medical physicist, and he's so passionate about the idea that cancer treatments can be improved that he brings to us today an idea that he thinks is worth sharing. I think you will as well, and that is math, oncology's new best friend. I'd like you to join me in welcoming Tim Fox. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, I love my topic today, math, oncology's new best friend. And why do I love this topic? It's simple for me because I love math. It's interesting, the other day I was getting ready for my talk and my seventh grade daughter came by the office. She goes, Dad, you know, why do you want to talk about math? And, you know, she's sitting here, she's 12 years old, she's learning French, Latin, of course, English. And I said, you know, math is really a language of numbers. It's a way we can communicate. And that's what I want you to take away from this talk today. You know, over the next few minutes, I want you to come away with a deep appreciation of math, especially the way we use math to, towards medicine. And also math is being used in our center to help us evaluate outcomes for cancer patients and how we can hopefully help make more successful outcomes. So let's get started. The first number, 14.3. You know, what does that mean? It doesn't mean much to any of us, but to a cancer patient, it can mean a lot. This is what we usually see in our clinic. We'll see a textual report and some images. And this report, as you dig into it, describes, you know, is there cancer there? This is created by a radiologist. And a radiologist is a physician that reads images and creates these reports. It's very valuable. Radiologists are very valuable to us. And as we dig into this, you'll see some terms like maximal SUV of 14.3. And so that looks like a foreign language to most of us, you know? And as we look at that, what does this really do for us? Well, it helps us tremendously diagnose the patient initially. But as we got into this, radiologists, they see images, they view images. But as oncologists, we treat patients. And I wanted a way to use the images more. And so this is what got us started, was we said, we want to use these images, these beautiful 3D images, to identify the cancer as shown here, where we can outline in yellow and draw on those images. And now with targeted cancer therapies, we can actually direct x-rays towards this and treat it. So it'll probably help to kind of walk you through just quickly the way we're taking imaging today for cancer patients. And as a cancer patient comes in, one of the very first things they're gonna do is they're gonna get a lot of imaging taken. You probably have relatives or friends that have done this that go through a lot of imaging exams. Lots of imaging is acquired. Once we decide we're going to treat the patient, a cancer patient is usually treated in one of three ways or some combination of radiation, surgery, or chemotherapy. And there's even more imaging taken then. The imaging helping us plan and guide the therapy. From there, the patient may go away for two to three months and they come back for that critical follow-up exam. And you may have a friend that's done that saying, I'm going to go back and get that checkup. They're hoping for good news and there's an imaging exam typically involved. And they want to see, is the cancer still there? And even if there's not, there's, there's even more hope today where we can actually treat cancer with other types of therapy. We can do more chemo or radiation and more imaging. And now what you're seeing is, as you look at this slide, you're seeing imaging at each area where it's helping us make decisions in those areas. But what's happened is we have this huge explosion of imaging data. And as we looked at this, it's not just the explosion of imaging data, but it's also the fact that all this data is not integrated. And so we believe that if we could integrate the treatment data and the imaging data all together, that we could create a more successful outcome for some of our patients. So this next number, 25,000. We took 25,000 images over eight months on one of our patients. All that information fit that timeline. It was very valuable information. But we said, we've got to be able to integrate. We've got to be able to bring this together. It's, it's now becoming more difficult for oncologists to view everything all at once. And so as we looked at this, we said, how do we put this data together? And so here's an example. And, and the fundamental problem that we found was that this was the challenge. The challenge is that patients, when they get these imaging exams, they're acquired in different positions at different times. And it may sound simple, but it's actually the most challenging problem that we've faced in our department. Here on the left, you can see we have a treatment scan. Patient's neck is straight. 
On the right, it's the same exact patient. And this is our software showing this where the patient had a pillow put on their neck for the diagnostic imaging exam. If we peel back that information, we can look underneath and we see on the left, we see the CT, which stands for us, computed tomography. It shows anatomy. Now we have on the right, we have this PET image, this new molecular imaging. It stands for positron emission tomography. And it shows function. It shows the tumor function. And you can see how it's lighting up there, and we've outlined it in yellow. And what we wanted to do is we want to map these two together to help us plan the therapy better. And when we do this, you can actually see it doesn't line up. And that's the fundamental problem. How do we actually map that together? And that's what got us going about five or six years ago. And if we really blow this up, you can really see it. What do we do? Well, a lot of us see images, but what I see behind the scene are numbers. Images are just numbers. All the pixels contain numbers. And so what we can do is we can extract these numbers for these images, from these three-dimensional images. And then from there, we can actually use mathematical equations. We can also use algorithms and optimization methods. And even here on our slide, these are some of the equations that are kind of part of our secret sauce of how do we actually map tissue from one scan to another. A lot of us might think, well, I could do something in Photoshop. But it can't be Photoshop, <laughs> OK? No Photoshop, because if we Photoshop, that's not going to get us where we want to go. Okay? We've got to track that tissue as it changes. And here's just a, uh, a quick movie. It looks easy, but this is how we drive it. This is our software driving the solutions together and actually mapping the tissue together. And it's very interesting, very hard work, and we've been really proud of this because now we can create these precise maps. Here's the solution. We've been able to take those 25,000 images and map them together. And this gives us new ways of treating cancer. I want to show you a quick challenging case. Here's the challenging case where we had a uh, patient, I know this uh, case well because they weren't responding to chemotherapy. And they had a lesion on the spine shown here in white. It's hard to see, but when we bring in the PET image, we can really see it lighting up there on the spine and even extending out of the spine. And we can target that area. And as we target that, we can actually come up now with precise forms to target that. We have a form of radio surgery. It's a form of radiation therapy. We can come in and actually deliver a high dose of radiation to that spine lesion, but also carve out and miss the spinal cord nearby. Very critical. But the question is, hey, did this work? The patient wants to know, did it work? And we can take the pre-treatment imaging, the treatment imaging, the post-treatment, we can bring that data together. And as we bring that together, we can actually feed this into our system. We can have the before treatment, the after treatment, as well as the treatment data all fed together. And when we do that, what we get out are maps. We've been able to condense that information, and here you can see maps. And in this case, it was great news for this patient. They had a positive outcome. They responded to the radiosurgery. And on the left, you can see in that green image, there's a blue dot there. That's where the lesion was. The numbers have decreased. The numbers going down, that indicates that the tumor is not as metabolically active as it was before. That's a good response. And our mathematical equations allow us to track the voxels from one scan to another, so now we can look at each pixel location there as dots on the graph. We can actually track and see that the numbers have decreased. So now we've been able to take 25,000, 10,000 images, you know, lifetime of images for patients, condense it down, and pull all this together. So I'm just going to summarize with a few numbers at the end. This is a talk about numbers. This is a talk about math. 15 million, 50,000, and 25,000. You know, a lot of people wonder, do we really use our system? We do use it. We've, we've brought in 15 million images into our system over the last three to four years. We've created 50,000 drawings where we've actually drawn on the images and targeted these areas. And we've done 25,000 alignments where we brought all the data together. And this is really important to us because what I wanted you to really take away from this is that math is so fundamental to everything. We've taken it and been able to create maps, helping physicians come up with new directions and decisions, and we've applied it to medicine. Thank you. Fantastic. You know, Tim, before I let you go, this is a, a, an issue I'm sure is very interesting to many people here, but me specifically, I have a father who is a longtime survivor of leukemia, and I'm curious about this work and kind of what the math does for the relationship between the doctor and the patient. So very important to, you know, the kind of recovery and, and survival for cancer patients. 
Yeah, with, with patients today, they're surviving longer. There's more treatment options for these patients. You know, we're able to now go in and really target metastatic disease that we mm. couldn't maybe treat before and come up with new ways of doing it. So it's, it's exciting because now we can kind of build up this lifetime of imaging and treatment information and really bring it all together. And that's what we've been doing. Well, thank you so much. Thank that's you. definitely an idea worth sharing. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. All right.